Hello, Detective Banks. Do you know where your officers are? Jigsaw? Hello, Detective Banks. When was the last time you saw your father? A. D. N. It's headphones, Neil! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's going to be the 2021 sequel iteration film, Saw from the Book of Spiral. So, for this particular review, I am doing something that I don't usually do for review, so I ended up renting the film via early access on Google Play TV or Google TV. Um, I had some credits and I wanted to definitely watch the film. I still don't feel safe going to the theaters as far as COVID goes, but that's neither here nor there. But because I'm a fan of the Saw franchise, I wanted to give... Uh, I knew I wanted to watch the film for sure, but how I saw it was up for, um, up for grabs. But I am glad that I was finally able to watch it. Um... So that's about it. If you're looking to rent it on Google TV, um, assuming it's going to be the same on Apple TV and Amazon Prime, but the um, uh, movie is streaming in 4K so that you definitely get a good quality version of the film there. I'm glad they're doing that rather than capping it at 1080p or something like that. So um, with that out of the way, I want to say that overall the film fits in with the theme of the re with the rest of the fan franchise. So um, you're going to have a setup, you're going to have a lot of gruesome death scenes, um, you're going to have a lot of random twists and turns, but the ultimate setup is going to be some... The an or the answer to the who's uh, performing all the Jigsaw murders is going to be right in front of our eyes. So... Um, I will. So if you haven't seen the film and don't want to be spoiled, I will say watch the film first. Or if you don't care, then definitely listen. So I'm gonna start with the um, ending first, and then jump into into some of the basically um, a film filled with tropes, but some of the stuff that I kind of liked in the film. Um, don't want to. Don't really find as far as this initial watching of stuff I didn't like, but. Now, uh, maybe a little bit more time will tell, or watching all of the films in succession will give me a little bit of um, different perspective as far as how this film compares to the rest of the films in the franchise. So, as far as the film goes, it continues with that whole trend of um, the setup and the person performing the murders was right in front of us the whole time. So, I want to say about halfway or three, time, three quarters of the way through the um, film, when we're getting or say getting into the final climax of the film and um they're we're getting or led into who or revealing who that the bad guy is i was basically getting a setup that either samuel l jackson or chris rock's um partner was going to be the main villain performing all the deeds mostly because Sam Jackson disappears about three quarters of the way through the film and um, we don't know where he went so that was my initial assumption that Sam Jackson was doing all of this and he was going to frame the partner or the vice versa because the Chris Rock's partner ends up disappearing as well. And as it turns out, Chris Rock's partner was the one who set up the game to begin with because that one other police officer in the department killed the partner's dad. And this was all a setup because um, Chris Rock's dad knew about the whole thing under Article 8. So um, this whole game was set up for <clears throat> Chris Rock to become partners with this jigsaw guy to clean up the department from the inside and generally apply it to, as, to the system as a whole, which... They kind of set up as Jigsaw being applying it to people on an individual basis, like on a micro level, but this was supposed to be on a macro level. Um, so overall, I thought that was pretty good. Um, as far as the one thing I didn't like in this film is that the vocabulator trap, the, or basically the set of videos or the recordings for all of the um, traps and the games being set up, 
I didn't find that as good as I, as they were in the rest of the films because they deviate from that uh, particular recording with a little bit more bassiness and um, ominousness. Um, in this film, it didn't feel ominous, and part of it is why change something that's worked, why change something that's been consistent in all the films. So um, I kind of don't want to... Uh, take it to that whole to that level where well they're they're changing it so it's obviously bad but for me it would have worked if they had kept it in that same scheme of um, voice recording so modulated to uh, mimic it so you know that something's off and you um, know that it's something someone different but make it sound as close to the original as possible rather than changing it up entirely so you know it's somebody different who's playing as a copycat. Um, the police are obviously going to know that it's a copycat because John Kramer is dead, so he's obviously um, not um, able to, or he's not going to be one of those people, not going to be the person making the uh, voice. So um, basically from there, once I got over that, it was, the movie had enough of the trope, so we have... Um, the first one where the, we have an old detective with family history on the force has to train a new guy. So Chris Rock is the experienced detective and he has to train the new partner who's in the department. So think of any cop buddy cop movie, whether it's a comedy or a action drama, and you kind of have that set up here. Um, and then as far as the next trope, we have the initial murder as an impetus. Um, for us to learn about the friend of the lead detective who was snitching on the old officers. So this is Chris Rock's original partner who shot the partner's dad back in the day. So we have a, the internal politics and drama and tension as far as in the side of the department and between partners and friends and family and all of that. And then the final trope was the son following in the father's footsteps and becomes a detective. So Chris Rock plays Sam Jackson's son. So um, with those tropes out of the way, um, overall, I thought that the, the vibe of the film was good. It stuck with the themes and of the previous films. Um, we know that, or the police know that Jim Kramer is dead, so this must be a copycat, so what's going on? Um, they try to stay a little bit ahead of it in that uh, Chris Rock knows that they need to figure this out as soon as possible because there's going to be a high body count, especially since they don't know what's going on or why this started up all of a sudden again. Um, so all overall good. It was it's definitely his own film. They didn't. They basically tried to separate as much as possible from the rest of the films because of this is all after the fact the jigsaw um, puzzle murders have gotten down and all of that but i like that they had the connection to saw one so when chris rock wakes up um in the random room with the guy who was against him we have the saw to cut off his leg but he figures it out assuming or leaving the viewer to remember that the saw is for the leg and assuming that the police know all about that as well so in this case, because um, Chris Rock's hand is tied to the pipe or handcuffed to the pipe, we're let he's led to assume that he needs to cut his arm off. But he does see the um, pick to pick the handcuff and is able to undo it. So a matter of convenience and plot point to not do that all over again. So good to for so for me it was good that they didn't try to rehash that. Um, so. Otherwise, there's not, the, the film pretty much stands on its own. Everything I told you is basically all the elements in the film. We have the new partner showing up. He's the person behind all these murders and everyone's trying to figure it, figure out what's going on. Um, and so that's pretty much the bulk of the film. Um, as far as the look and feel, I did like the, or my favorite look in the film was the train station when um, I want to say in the first third of the film when Chris Rock and his new partner are going to figure out this new latest murder that's um, at the train station and it had a very Max Payne vibe so I kind of looked like that. The look and feel was similar to the beginning of Max Payne when you start the game in the train station. Um, you do have to go through the um, construction of the train station so 
a good vibe there. And then I liked the one-liner by Chris Rock as far as this is some New Jack City stuff going on here. Um, and if you don't know, uh, Chris Rock played a drug addict in New Jack City, and it's a scene where they're going after the some drug addicts to squeeze them for a uh, connection. So um, that definitely definitely worked for me. So um, overall, if I was to give the film a grade, as after this initial viewing, I want to give it a grade of about A minus ninety percent. Um, overall good um, the games were very well done um, it left me pretty much guessing through um, most of the film basically until the partner and our Chris Rock's partner and Chris Rock's dad end up going missing um, it was it pretty much had me wondering who it was even though they had enough clues throughout the film to have us indicate that something is up with the partner so um, we have to, so we know that he's kind of, um, that he's the core, that he's something's gonna be up with him, but we don't know what. Um, he, so for me, that all generally works. So I want to say that now looking back on it, yeah, obviously it was him. He gave, he, he dropped enough clues, but we're led to believe also that he was naive enough as a new guy on the force or new guy in the department as far as that it is not him and it could be and literally anybody else and we're even hoping that maybe it's an offspring of John Kramer that we didn't know um, um, who he was or who that child was he grew up outside of the system because Kramer was that good about it and he left his tapes and knowledge and all of that for him to grow up to be another jigsaw killer so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any con questions comments or anything like that um you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff of course you can support the show get early access the bonus content and upcoming content and things like that on the patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 but thanks for tuning into this particular episode and